yako tutarudi kwa huu mswada kwenye kikao kijacho Thank you Madam Speaker Madam Speaker I moved a motion of the uh, notice of adjournment of the of the house on the definite matter of urgent national importance regarding the escalating state of insecurity in Laikipia. Madam Speaker, uh, we are all aware that security of the citizens of Kenya and their property is a constitutional right. And as we speak, Madam Speaker, the residents of Laikipia North and especially Mgogodo East and parts of Segera Ward have been denied that very important and constitutional right. Madam Speaker, it's very difficult for members of parliament to go on their daily duties while the people we represent are actually being terrorized in their own homes they can't go about their own personal businesses because of these terrorists called bandits. And Madam Speaker, sometimes I really wonder what this thing called cattle wrestling is. Whatever it is, it is robbery with violence. And if it is robbery with violence, the robbers must be met by equal violence from the state. Madam Speaker, as I stand on the floor of this house today, the residents of Laikipia North, from December last year to date, actually we've been visited by terror, a group that has rained a lot of terror on the constituents. And Madam Speaker, nobody is safe. Even our security agencies on the ground are not safe. As I speak here, Madam Speaker, on 6th of February 2024, Mediaku Meshami was attacked in his home at Ripolei. They drove away 80 herds of goats and he was left nursing a, gun, a gunshot wound on his leg. Madam Speaker, on March 2nd, Abraham Lepiet, a classic people, was attacked by bandits and 78 goats from their family were driven away and the boy was left with serious gunshot wounds. Madam Speaker, on, May, on March, 15th March, Lolmarik Farm was attacked and 200 herds of cows was driven away and nothing has been recovered to date. Madam Speaker, in December 29th of 2022, Mr. Getumbe's 61 cows were driven away, and to date, nothing has been recovered. Madam Speaker, I can go on and on and on. But Madam Speaker, on 31st of March, residents of Sanga were attacked and the home of Chief Kisio and his family was attacked. 400 hearts of cattle were driven away, and a 12-year-old boy, one John Lesalaon, was left to fight for his life. As I speak on the floor of this house, that boy is still in ICU, fighting for his life. Madam Speaker, on 8th of April, again they attacked a homestead in Graton, and shot one Brian Kenywa, a 17-year-old boy, who is still nursing gunshot wounds at the cottage hospital. Madam Speaker, what am I saying? All our cattle and goats and sheep and camels which are being driven away by this ruthless militia is driven into Mugogodo Forest. Mugogodo Forest is one of the most indigenous and well-preserved forests in this country. Katase of the Yaku people and the Rungwesi people who have used traditional knowledge to preserve that forest. But as we speak today, that forest is a no-go zone for those people. 
That forest have got new dwellers, very recent dwellers, heavily armed bandits who have moved into that forest with their families and kicked everybody out and they come still from the residents and drive all our livestock in that forest. My question, and I'm begging an answer from the government, is Mgogodo Forest not in Kenya? What does the Kenyan government lack to do a thorough operation in Mgogodo Forest? And Madam Speaker, these bandits are so ruthless. When they attack homesteads, which they know nobody is armed, you wonder why they can't just drive the livestock away and leave these children to go about with their daily lives, go to school without killing them, maiming them, and leaving a lot of pain behind. And Madam Speaker, you know we just came out of a very bad drought that has not been witnessed in the last 40 years or so. And 90% of our livestock was swept away by the drought. And Madam Speaker, for those people who still have livestock today, they did a lot of sacrifice to have those livestock. Some of them drove their livestock to Mount Kenya uh, forest. They breast the cold of Mount Kenya forest, the diseases in Mount Kenya forest. Some of them bought hay for their animals. Some of them hired grass from the neighboring ranches just to make sure that they save those little uh, livestock which is their main source of income, Madam Speaker. Those livestock is what we sell to educate our children. Those livestock is what we sell to get food. Those livestock is our life, Madam Speaker. And as we speak, what was left by the drought is being taken away from us forcefully in broad daylight. Madam Speaker, the other day, His Excellency, the President was in Laikipia on 12th, and we raised the issue with him. And the president is so passionate about making sure that Northern Kenya is secure. And as the president was addressing the issue in Rumuruti, in broad daylight, at midday, they shot dead Daniel Karisho, who is a very successful farmer, who is an NPR. You know, at midday, when the president is on the other side of the county, the bandits are putting an operation on the other side of the county. And Madam Speaker, we'll be burning Karisha on Friday. You wonder, what has he done to deserve that kind of death? Madam Speaker, I would want to beg this house that we cannot keep on crying on the floor of this house. Baringwe is crying, Samburi is crying, Laikipia is crying, Egeyo Marakwet is crying, Siju West Pokot is crying. I don't know whether Tieti is laughing, but Mr. Madam Speaker, I'm just asking, for how long? What does the government lack to deal with these bandits once and for all? And Madam Speaker, we cannot be, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes, those operations that are normally done in these areas. And when these operations are done, we hear a lot of we hear a lot of noise, a lot of human rights activists, IPOA. I want to ask IPOA and the human rights Member activists. Member Fotiati, what is out of order? Honorable members, kindly use your cards for intervention and for contribution. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I did not want to interrupt the Honorable Member, whom I consider my mother, for, for many reasons. But, but Madam Speaker, you, you heard what she said. I mean, that was quite cynical for, coming from her, that, that, that she doesn't know whether Tiati is crying or, or, or is laughing. I mean, how, how, how does it have to be Tiati? Yet, yet I, I know the problem she's talking about, the band she's talking about, are mo most likely from Samburu. Why did, how, how did Tiati come in? Can she, can she just withdraw that? Because for the first time, Mr. Madam Speaker, we are debating insecurity in this house without, without being caused by my people. And she's, she's just finding a way.
bring some theater. Remember for theater, don't debate. Why does she don't want debate. to bring some theater for no reason? Don't debate because I had Honorable Korea mention very many companies. Yeah. Maybe no, she, she, she knows what she, she you have made your point. Honorable Kamket, you've made your point. Honorable Korea. As I wind up, I think Kamket is quoting me out of context. I just looked across the aisle and I saw him laughing, so I'm sorry. I don't mean anything. Madam Speaker, as I conclude, these bandits are ruthless. And they know no other language other than ruthlessness. And the government security agencies must treat them with the ruthlessness they deserve. And Madam Speaker, they cannot use their families as a human shield. Madam Speaker, number one, I even don't understand why people should go and camp with the children in the heart of the forest. These children are not going to school. The first thing is they are actually even denying their own children their basic constitutional rights of the right to education. And Madam Speaker, it is a high time the government act. Madam Speaker, as I speak, and I want to say this on the floor of this house, we are not safe. In my, in my constituency, they killed one chief, who is my own brother-in-law. They have raided from four chiefs. They are actually targeting all leaders. You have one minute, Honor Bukorere, one minute. Okay. In Samburu, we lost an MCA. Madam Speaker, as the leaders, these bandits now are targeting leaders. And I can tell you, and the Shimua Kiunjuri can confirm, even in my own home, they raided and they killed my herdsmen. Madam Speaker, I even know as I stand here, I'm not safe anymore. Well said. M member for Laikipia like, East. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise also to express our concerns as the people of Laikipia like, County. Our fear and anxiety that has really gripped our people for the last three months or so. We are by, as has been laid clearly by Sala Mweshimiwa, that we are visited every week three or four times. For the last four months, bandits have been looming in Laikipia, terrorizing people in Laikipia North. During daytime, they come scouting fearlessly, they will come and scout from the homes that they will come and steal in the evening. They can be seen during the day in the conservances, in the valleys, within uh, Garidare. And what really surprises us is the heavy presence deployed police officers and stock theft units. They are allowed, but these uh, bandits are still roaming. Freely, they can come and steal. Madam Speaker, what worries the residents of those areas is that even they can come all the way, they jump some few homes where there are animals, and come just 20 meters to us to, that is, and stock theft unit, and steal from there, and no police officer would even shoot in the air or even come out of the camp. They have gone ahead to even isolate areas whereby they go to the chief's camp at Edi, a uh, 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 chief's home at Edi, they will steal animals, and chief lives about uh, uh, 50 meters away from the police post. Our question is, as leaders of Rekipia, and what we need to know, if our people are not safe, how are we expected to react? Police officers are out, they are not acting. Are they submitting? Are they overwhelmed? Or are they collaborating with the thieves? So far, animals have been taken. None of those bandits, the perpetrators are still free. None of them have been apprehended. Animal recovery is almost at 1% recovery. Everyone knows where they are taken, that they are taken through the ranches. And our question is whether some of the ranchers, and especially on Naisho farm, whether they are also collaborating with the, uh, the, with the bandits. That area is expansive, and it takes time for them to move from the villages to the forest. How comes that they can be able to steal, uh, uh, drive the, the animals comfortably to Mogodo Forest, which they have made their safe haven? 
Madam Speaker. These officers and the budgets, are they submitting that now it is bringing it on? And if they cannot reverse them, and we don't have enough police resurfaced, how would we, are we expected to react? Madam Speaker, information is very clear. Security forces know where the animals are taken. And one wonders if security forces know where the animals are. The people where animals are taken from, everybody knows where the animals have been taken. Why can't this government, our question, take action similar to that that was taken during the raids at Mount Ergon, whereby all the agencies were brought together, and if it calls for us to amend the law, whereby now the army must come in. Because you cannot have Kenyans being terrorized across the country, North Rift, Central Rift, everywhere, that today we are only hearing that are, the government is up in arms, that they are countering them. We have not seen any incidents, serious incidents, that can teach them a lesson. We are demanding an operation similar to the one that was carried out in Boni Forest, be carried in Mogodo Forest, be carried in Scooter Valley, and all other areas where government knows that cattle-driven, animals-driven, from even other constituencies are taken. So that serious action is taken that these people should never repeat again. The perpetrators and the collaborators must be punished in their commissions. If the government is not going to do that, we are wasting our time. The Masiri in Mukogondo, Mount Erogon operation, Boni Forest operation, combined forces must come there, and government must show its force. Otherwise, the parties are there, they can see government can back, but it cannot bite. We agree. Uh, C.S. Kidiki is doing a lot of work, but it's so more of a paper now, if you ask them, you'll be a paper tiger, end of the day, if you cannot bite. Madam Speaker, we strongly condemn these criminals, this act of cowardice, and we must make sure the perpetrators are brought to book. If, no, if there is no serious action by government to the perpetrators and the collaborators, they know them by name, like when they killed Karisho on Friday, they left two uh, phones behind them. With that only, they are able to say who these uh, uh, bandits were, who are their collaborators, and because it's an enterprise, Madam Speaker, it's not only about cattle history, it's an enterprise. It is for the first time we must deal with those people who are arming the bandits, who are involved in this business, because end of the day, these animals end up somewhere. Some are stolen for restocking, as Kamte would call it, but some are also stolen, and there are some rich people somewhere advancing this business who must now be called by their names, who must be brought to book, and what you want this time allowed is that a tougher, bigger action. I always like the way KWS operates. If they discover that police are doing nothing, they have their own way of eliminating these people. And the only way is that even those who are being sent to steal, those people with that behavior of always restocking, this must come to an end. Madam Speaker, if you look at uh, who is involved in this business, already we know where the, our problems are coming from. Go to Kibish, uh, 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 Kips, Kipsin. Look at the farmers around, they are armed where animals are being taken away, all the farmers around, they have more than 40, 50 police reservists. They have security armed by the same government. Madam Speaker, it is the high time this government sit down and reconsider its decision on whether they will continue arming those farmers, and especially those ones who cannot stop this kind of a, an attack to the people of Laikipia. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, for us, we are agreeing the government is taking action. We are agreeing that forces are being employed. However, how do we now gain confidence of government if the same officers who are being employed with the command cannot take action? Those answers must be given to us. And the only way we can ag agree and accept the government is taking action is recovering our animals. 
is to see people brought to justice, to see people being punished. Those who make other people cry must also cry. They should not steal our animals in, at their own leisure and have the pleasure to go and enjoy the route. With those few remarks, Madam Speaker, I beg to support and uh, seriously ask this House to consider, even if you are going now to amend the laws that are necessary to ensure that there is combined forces, that action can be taken with, with, no, with no boundary. The army should come in, police should come in, other security forces must come in. I support. Thank you. Minority Leader. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, let me join my two colleagues, the Honorable Sarah Korere and the Honorable Mange Kiwinjuri, in uh, expressing my disgust at these uh, incessant uh, acts of banditry and cattle or livestock theft in these areas. And I want to share I aren't really to subscribe to their sentiments to a large extent. But Madam Speaker, you know, we need to look at the root cause of all this. I am not really privy to what goes on there in detail. But from my understanding of what I'm being uh, told, uh, this is no longer just a way of life, as we are being made to believe when we were young, that cattle theft or banditry is a way of life. No. It has become a pure economic activity that uh, therefore calls for more in-depth uh, uh, look into what then can be done uh, to address the economic situation of the people living in those areas. Because if they got more gainful economic uh, uh, engagement, they would perhaps uh, uh, slowly get away from these nefarious activities. But that is food for thought, and it's the duty of the government of the day to really address, address those concerns. But secondly, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, and tied to the first issue, you know, if this banditry was contained, it would actually create an environment, conducive environment, for more meaningful economic activities to happen, to take place. That would, in the long run, help not only the people living in those areas, but help the whole country, really. Because every single part of the country, if is economically active, or productive will contribute to the overall economic development of the country. So I think it's incumbent upon the government of the day to really address this issue, but in a holistic manner. What we have tended to see from time to time are knee-jerk reactions. Knee-jerk reactions that, uh, that seem not to be yielding fruits, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, let me also say this. I am not a security expert. Not like my good friend, the Honorable Russell. Uh, but I am not too damp to see trends. When I'm speaker in the recent past, and this is my own observation, as a country you have done very well, and I must, I must commend the National Intelligence Service, the current leadership, National Intelligence Service. We have done so well in containing terrorism in this country. We have done very, very well in combating terrorism and terrorist acts in the recent past. And I attribute this in my own way uh, to the National Intelligence Service, perhaps. But, Madam Speaker, the question that comes to my mind there is, why can't we use the tactics we have been able to use in containing terrorism in the recent past in dealing with this menace? Is this menace too, too complex, yes, to be dealt with conclusively, uh, Honorable Rasu? <laughs> you may be telling me after this, Yes, okay. Uh, what is it that, is, uh, uh, that this uh, uh, banditry entails that is so difficult, so complex for the government to, unra to, 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 to deal with, really, uh, and to the benefit of the country? So I think even as we debate this, and I really sympathize with my good friend, Honorable Sarah Kureri, because I can imagine what she's going through. If her own life is now is in danger, she's not even sure uh, that she's uh, uh, safe anymore and a leader who is elected by the people. So what, of this, what, what is the situation, therefore, uh, of the rest of the populace, the ordinary people in like Kepia, okay? And elsewhere, it's not just like Kepia. It's like Kepia, it's Samburu, it is uh, everywhere. It's Baringo, okay? So I think this house should now move from just mere uh, 
talk uh, to more concrete action. Because if it is talking, we have talked enough. Ever since I joined this parliament in 2013 with you, Madam Speaker, we have had this talk. Yes, every other session of parliament we have talked about this insecurity situation, about the banditry, about the cattle rustling, but we seem not to be getting anywhere. So I think it is now incumbent upon this house uh, to now think outside the box and perhaps take extraordinary measures to deal with this clearly extraordinary situation. With all with those very many remarks, Madam Speaker, I adopt the sentiments of my two colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Member for Saku. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I wish to join the leader of minority, Honorable Sara, and uh, Mwangi Kiunjuri, in what they have expressed uh, this afternoon. Uh, I speak from the floor of this house as the patron of the Pastoralist Parliamentary Group, as a former officer of Kenya Defense Forces, and also as vice chair of security representing the National Assembly. As a committee, we have managed to visit Laikipia, Samburu, Turkana, West Pokot, Marakwet, Baringo. And we are convinced beyond reasonable doubt that the CS Kindiki is doing so much and he has achieved so much. But the 20% of work that is undone, cooperation of security forces, administrators, and a lot of cartels who have made the issue of insecurity internally in Kenya totally unbearable for quite sizable part of the Kenyan population. We have visited some of the areas, like in Baringo, that locations and even wards, people have moved away because they can't live in their homes and they can't farm. And I said to both my colleagues and the population we found, wherever we visited, that we cannot allow that situation to obtain. I also agree with uh, the leader of minority. If we are able to deal with terrorism, people without faces, people who we can only trace maybe on computers or on telephones or in technological fingerprints, why can't we deal with bandits in Mukogodo Forest? Are there special people who are undertaking these criminal uh, activities? Madam Speaker, the Committee of Security will table a report, I think by next week, following our extended visit into all these troubled spots. Further to that, we have said the idea of blanketly naming, oh, this area, this tribe, these communities, I think it must come to an end. We must focus on areas, individuals, whether they are leaders or politicians. People must account for what they are doing in terms of making Kenya unsafe. Madam Speaker, What Honorable Sarah has raised, you know, we take many things for granted. You leave Parliament, and without looking left or right, you straight go to maybe a social place, or you go home. But a lot of these members who come from these bandit-prone areas, unless they are adequately covered by security, they will not even attempt to go to their homes, let alone villages to condole with bereaved families. So, Madam Speaker, I thank Honorable uh, Sarah for 
raising this very, very important issue. But I want to assure the House as a committee, we are going to name names, we are going to name pockets of troubles in this country, and we are going to stop at no point, even administrators, if they are part of this problem. With those remarks, I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Member for Karachuanyu. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for uh, giving me the opportunity to say a word or two on uh, this insecurity affair. Madam, it's a very sad thing to listen to the story of what's happening where this insecurity is prevalent. Surely, to see that somebody who had his own home is living almost nowhere, perhaps in the forest, just for fear of his life is a sad thing. The number one priority of, the, of any government is the security of its people. I, I, I appeal to the government to rise up to the occasion and do what is need, needed to cause peace so that our areas which are suffering can feel safe. Madam Speaker, I know that there are causes, like the minority leader said, there must be causes for all this. But are these causes unique to these particular places alone? It, it is possible these causes are in other parts of this nation as well. But those places have not taken to arms in order that they can fight the battle going on elsewhere. We therefore, I can say, have potential problems in these other, quote, peaceful places, because indeed they are not peaceful. They have a potential problem waiting to occur. It is, again, very important and necessary for the government to rise up to the occasion and face the situation before they explode to join the other parts of the country where problems are already on the surface. You see that we are talking of development. We are talking of progress, economic uh, programs, uh, pr uh, progress and so forth. Where peace is not existing is a waste of time. Our nation will never, never develop if what has started in these areas we are talking about are allowed to continue. We will not get anywhere with our effort. I know we pay a lot of tax so that we can improve our country. But then, who will be able to use the resources necessary for, problem, uh, for development if you do not know what's coming to you the next day? Individually and even as communities, if you know today but you don't know tomorrow, you cannot invest. You cannot try to accumulate anything that would add to your wealth if you have any. In other words, Madam Speaker, what I'm saying is that the problem we are facing is a serious one needing a very, very serious action in order that Kenya can develop and move forward. But if we sleep over the, the, over the peace, pretending that de development upon which we are spending a lot of effort will be fruitful, Madam Speaker, I think we are daydreaming. I beg the government to take action now and not tomorrow. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, County MP Siolo. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. 
Uh, Madam Speaker, I want to stand to support this motion, hoping to capture the deep pains that pastoralists and families in this part of the country go through in the hands of these bandits who are roaming our lands with a lot of impunity that any man, anyone cannot imagine. Uh, Madam Speaker, while we could survive natural calamities like floods and droughts in this part of the country, it is very hard to stay safe from these bandits because they are all over, they are operating with so much impunity, they can come in, raid, kill, maim, and still get away with it. Madam Speaker, standing before you, I want to present a case of an innocent Form 3 girl by the name uh, Fatuma Wako Wario, who was uh, leaving school just recently after closing. She was on her way home to see her parents on 1st April on the road, on Isiolo Merti Road. She was shot dead by these bandits. This left the parents and the families so devastated and many other families so hopeless to the extent that they are even afraid to send the learners to schools anymore. Madam Speaker, Father, what has left many families so helpless is the fact that even after these bandits have raided and taken all the lives and destroyed everything, it is amazing that the state could not go after them and recover those herds when they have complete intelligence on where the herds are and who are keeping it. Just to give you an example for my county, we do have 147 camels hidden in a Mukogodo forest, just like mentioned by Mushimua here. It is known where, which boma, how many other um, bandits are involved, but there is no action from the government. So one is left to wonder, in a state where we have an, a security establishment and machineries that are functional, why is it so hard to go after these people, even after they've destroyed lives? At least recovering those herds will give some hope to families and these pastoralists. But still, the security agencies are not ready to go after them. So that can only embolden these bandits to come back again, kill, maim, and the cycle continues. Madam Speaker, this is a matter that has now uh, killed so many hopes. It has broken families. It has taken away livelihoods. It has, I, can, I can't further describe it. And we can't normalize it, making it look like it's a normal thing on this part of the country and nothing can be done. I think as pastoralists, as leaders, we feel that it is enough and it is time we probably relook our way of handling bandits. And if there's need for us to have a conversation on how we could handle it in a different way, then this is the time. This is the time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, member for Malakwet West. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute on this very important motion. I wish to thank the Honorable Korere for this uh, motion. Honorable Speaker, as we speak, there are, there are sections in this country, particularly the North Rift, that are under a militia. Honorable Speaker, those are sections of the country that literally there is no government. There are young men, women, and children who are wielding guns, moving from one place to another, raiding families, killing innocent children, killing innocent women. Honorable Speaker, can you imagine in this century that we are, we are in a place where there are no schools, there are no churches, there are no public utilities in that particular area. Honorable Speaker, it is something that as a country, we must sit down and we discuss. Because if you look at the history of this country, this country developed along the railway lines. There are areas in this country that have been marginalized and currently they are still being marginalized. Honorable Speaker, 
when we talk about marginalization funds that were set aside, Honorable Speaker, it is unfortunate that marginalization funds that was meant to develop areas that were left behind have been hijacked and used for other issues that were not originally meant for. Honorable Speaker, my opinion on this issue, the person or the office to blame for the runaway insecurity in this country is the office of the IG. Honorable Speaker, we feel that the Inspector General of Police has no stamped authority to deal with the issue of bandits in this country. Honorable Speaker, in fact, when we talk to our people, uh, other, other officers down there, they say, CC, we don't take advice. We don't take instructions from Raya. Honorable Speaker, the Raya they are, they are referring to is the CS for, for internal security. Honorable Speaker, we feel there is sabotage. We feel there is sabotage from within government, from within certain officers in this government. Honorable Speaker, there is no way that a militia will run the entire day, kill people, and there is no it, there, there is no arrest by our police officers. I, I thank the Honorable Member for, from SACO, and she has made a profound statement before the floor of this house that they have identified certain individuals because criminals, gangsters, cannot be a community. Gangsters are certain individuals who should be isolated and perhaps assassinated because they have run a vogue in the Kerio Valley. They have run up a vogue in other areas in this country. Honorable Speaker, finally, so that I give other members to speak. It is, it is an issue that as a house, even as I was sitting here, a member of parliament passed here and said, in near bandits. You can imagine, you know, referring to us as bandits. Because as members of this house, we feel that those areas have been marginalized. And there is need for a deliberate effort by the government to make sure that service delivery is taken to this, uh, this area and those individuals are is identified, isolated, and of course the necessary action be taken so that those criminals are wiped out. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Member for Turkana East. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this time to add my voice to this <coughs> motion. Madam Speaker, the issue we are discussing here, I don't know how we can term it because we, the members of parliament from the North Rift and also like Kiria, Isiolo and the other affected areas, which they have been taken away by bandits. Madam Speaker, I've just heard the honorable member for Saku saying very soon they are going to table a report here on security on those areas. They visited my constituency about a month or two months ago. And he said, time has come for us to say these bandits by names. But Madam Speaker, to me, I don't know how true is that because when you hear all these members speaking here, condemning this issue. Here they, like if you're talking, the mention of the bandits from certain area. Madam Speaker, until the time that report will be tabled in this house, that's the time we can mention those people by names. But before that, time has come for this country to face the Pokoti community who are terrorizing the entire communities in the North Rift. And we cannot be afraid to say that because we can't be say, told, at least say, let's not uh, mention a community. But who are these people now? Can the government tell us who are these people by names? So that we cannot say the Pokot community. Can we be given the list of the terrorists from the Pokot community who are terrorizing the Turkana community, the Tugen community, the El Shamsu community, the El Gay Marocot, the, the, the Marocot community, the Samburu community, the Raikivia community, they are the Pokot community. And if somebody has the list of the, those people from the Pokot who are terrorizing the entire region of the North Rift, 
Yes, there is a table in this house so that we can be, we can start mentioning the name of that community. Abokorere. Uh, Honorable Speaker, from where I sit, there is no community of terrorists by that terrorist. And in Laikipia, I'm terrorized by terrorists believed to be coming from Isiolo North and Samburu East. Not Pokot. Number for Turkana East, you shall not mention a community. I think the ch vice chair of the administration committee has already committed that they will bring a report with a list. Thank you, Madam, thank you, Madam Speaker. I have just said that, that I am waiting for that list to be table here. So that we can get the list of the terrorists. Even if they come from Turkana East, they come from where, get the list to be table here. So that we can avoid mentioning those communities. But before that, in me, before that list to be table here, which name are we going now to use? And that's what it has made this issue to continue because we are trying to cover it. People are dying, clothes are being burned by the people we know coming from an area. But we are saying not to say their names or not to say that community. Until when, Madam Speaker, can this issue continue in this country? People are being killed in my, in my uh, constituency. Schools have been closed for the last three years now. Those kids are not going to school. And nobody is taking an action. And when you hear these people are dealing with the alcohol here in Central Province, every effort is being taken there. Is that not life? Are the lives in the rural areas not the same lives like the, the, the lives in, in the Central Kenya? Madam Speaker, it is really a time whereby this country, the leaders of this country, can come out and see how they can help the people of North Rift. Um, For those who remarks, Madam Speaker, let me just stop there so that the rest of the members can contribute too. Thank you, Member for Turkana East. Uh, County MP Laikipia. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute to this adjournment motion. Honorable Speaker, I forever remain grateful to the people of Laikipia County for giving me an opportunity to serve them. But it was as the toughest part of this job is when I receive a phone call from a family at night, either through text message or a phone call they managed to make, telling me that the bandits or cattle rustlers are outside their house. In a good case, Honorable Speaker, the following day they call you back and tell you they drove away with their herd of cattle. In a bad case, the community calls you back and tells you they killed a member of that family. Honorable Speaker, such is the life that Laikipians are leading today. Honorable Speaker, it is also good to mention that Laikipia County is the 15th largest county in this country, despite us having three constituencies. That said, Honorable Speaker, we are generous enough to have seven counties as our neighbors. We start with Isiolo, we go to Nyeri, we go to Meru, we go to Nakuru, Baringo, Samburu, and Isiolo are all our neighbors. Honorable Speaker, we are peaceful neighbors, but in many instances, we have neighbors who keep antagonizing us and affecting the residents of Laikipia County. That said, Honorable Speaker, our challenges are cattle rustlers. And when it is not cattle rustlers, we have illegal grazers coming to disturb us. Honorable Speaker, the greatest challenge we have as Laikipians is we know the corridors where these cattle rustlers pass. And Honorable Speaker, any member in this house knows the speed of a cow and how fast or how slow it walks. So when somebody says 200 cattle have been driven away, if the security had the intent and the purpose of catching up with these cattle rustlers, they would be able to do that. Honorable Speaker, in this day and age, there is technology. We have drones, we have armored vehicles, which if our system agrees to use, it is going to be very easy to end the cattle rustling in Laikipia County. Honorable Speaker, it is also good to mention that in uh, the 15 wards I have in my county, seven uh, of those wards are actually being antagonized by insecurity. And I'll give an example of a word called Gedega. In Gedega ward, we even know the corridor the cattle rustlers use. There's a place called Mlima Jangiri, we have Matweku, we have Metaro. Those are places where people, it is well known to even the security that this is where the cattle rustlers pass. They have been unable to stop these people. We go to Olmoran, the same case we have at Wangwashi. We go to Salama Ward, there at checkpoint, we have an issue there. And it is also good to mention, like two weeks ago at checkpoint, they actually killed an elderly man. And in that instance, I remember the senator and the honorable MC of that area trying to pursue the cattle rustlers. 
They found them seated somewhere in a house by assistance of some sniffer dogs. Honorable Speaker, I find myself thinking, what if the cattle rustlers had seen them approaching? The story would be different today. Again, we have been forced as leaders to become security agencies on the ground because the security agencies on the ground have refused to work. It is our plea that we need to know the structure that is going to be used in uh, security in our areas because as it's been mentioned by a colleague earlier, it seems these security forces have instructions they receive from somewhere else. For me, I like to go with the good book, the Bible. Leviticus says an eye for an eye. I don't know why in our instance, a cattle rustler comes, kills our people, but when it comes to their arrest, they have to either be treated with uh, baby gloves or treated as if they're special people. The same uh, uh, justice they met on our people should be the same justice that should actually be meted on them. Honorable Speaker, I speak of seven uh, words that have insecurity, and we know where all these insecurities is coming from. Uh, recently in Social World, our MC was almost killed as he was also pursuing cattle uh, that had been stolen there. Honorable Speaker, it is my plea as a leader of Laikipia County, and I join my fellow colleagues in saying a time has come. If we will deliver nothing else for our people, we must deliver security to them. And security must be restored in, Re in Laikipia County, and the time for it to be restored is now and not later. And Honorable Speaker would like to add that our chiefs also need to be given powers. Chiefs walk out of, uh, in the middle of the night to assist our people, but again they are told they cannot give instructions to the security forces. It is time we get to know who is this person who needs to give instructions for our people to be secured, for them to be ensured they are safe, and the time is now. And we are demanding for it. We can no longer keep pleading for it. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I support the adjournment motion. Thank you, County MP Baringo. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I also want to add my voice on this uh, matter of insecurity and banditry. In, and I want to thank my sister, Honorable Korere, and uh, MP Laikipia for bringing this uh, motion before us. Madam Speaker, I think we have spoken, we have attended meetings, we have screamed, we have written letters. I think we have done what is humanly possible to put across this menace. We have talked to everyone that cares to listen. Sometimes I wonder, Madam Speaker, that how many people should die? How many families should be displaced? How many children should not go to school because schools are closed? How many water ponds and boreholes, for instance, are this, should be destroyed for government that I was bestowed by the people to protect them? I was elected in the I mean, uh, the side of government, that is the UDA party. And every day, we always remind our people that this is the government that all of us voted for, and we all expected that this problem, at least, should be eased on our back. But unfortunately, it has even, to some extent, become more burden. Because I think when you have a lot of hope and you don't get the hope, it becomes more, you know, burden. I want to say, Madam Speaker, as a member of parliament today, I would really wish the government, my government, to take time and give a goodwill for once and for all. Today, or the other time when we came in, the, I, we saw the government taking time to fight on the menace on illicit bruise. We, mo uh, we mobilize a lot of resources. We call on leaders to take charge, close shops, arrest people, stop bus. That is business. I just wish the same energy, the same effort should be used to stop this problem. Because, Madam Speaker, you know, I just want to give a, 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 an example. When I am going to drink, even if it's an illicit brew or I'm walking into a club, I sit down, order my beer, drink one, two, three, probably up to the morning. I'll do that the following day, and to some extent, I'll be addicted to it. 
That is when it is realized it's a problem. What about a mother? Who is sitting right in a house? A farmer or a pastoralist taking care of his cows is ambushed, attacked, thrown out of his home. All his wealth, our cows are driven away and no one talks about it. It is one thing for government to put orders of problems and it's another thing to see what really on how really are we going to take care of these uh, victims of mandate. Someone said communities are not supposed to be pointed as criminals but there are many criminals that is that occurs from one communities or communities and it is the prerogative of the community to take to take initiative to control like for instance when Mungiki was terrorizing everyone in Nairobi and central province it took the Kikuyu community to stop that menace likewise to Somali on al Shabab it is the same thing that this problem and specifically for me from the Kopokot should take charge and take up the challenge to eradicate this problem. Lastly, I want to tell the president, Kenyans are looking at, specifically the Kalenjin, specifically the Tugans, specifically the communities that are affected by this, they really wish and really hope this time round this problem is going to be sorted. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Member for Samburu North. I rise to, to support uh, the adoption motion by the Honorable Member for Laikipia North, uh, Mwishimua Sara Korede. And I really feel for her, uh, just like I feel for all the other members from the North Rift who are affected uh, by this uh, insecurity menace. I come from uh, Baragoi in Samburu North. And uh, Madam Speaker, we are uh, now going on 30 years of uh, gun related cattle wrestling in that part of this country. I believe very many voices have spoken about the advice in this house. And uh, the fact that we are still talking on the floor of this house about this issue really is an indictment on the government of the Republic of Kenya. 30 years down the road, people are still being killed. Families are uh, traumatized. Children are killed. You heard from the, mem uh, from the women rep, Isiolo. You heard from Shimiwa uh, Sara Kore. You heard from Shimiwa uh, Jamatia. You heard from every member who spoke, to sp uh, who, walk, who stood up to speak on the floor of this house. We are talking about fresh killings. Over the past one year, we have lost over 105 people in Samburu. I have lost uh, an MCA, an elected leader, a month or so ago. Up to date, since the killing of that uh, honorable member, the late uh, Paul Leshimbro, the MCA for Angatana Nyike in Samburu North constituency, we have not seen any concrete action by the government to either bring those who killed him to book we have not seen any concrete action to really inspire confidence in the communities which live there. Schools in that part of the world have closed. They have not closed because the term is, uh, has come to a close. They closed because of insecurity. Three schools in Angatana Nike, Angatana Nike Primary, Ngabai Primary, Soitpus Primary, Kids are not going to those schools anymore. 
because they fear to go to school. At so it was primary, a teacher was shot, a cook was shot in the evening. There were no cows in the school. People just came and shot them. That is the kind of terror that is visiting the communities in, in the North Rift and in parts of Samburu County. Madam Speaker, I would support the sentiments by Honorable Kiwinjuri that if the government is serious, really this is a very small matter. In Baragoi, for instance, the once infamous Baragoi, over the past one and a half years, we have really lived in relative peace. That is because the government came strongly and uh, came into partnership with the elected leaders and communities. And they sent us uh, specialist units who uh, really supported community-led peace initiatives. I would uh, really recommend that the, we, if we can amend the laws here, to even bring the military to bear so that we can see what happened in Mount Elgon replicated across northern Kenya. Because as long as small arms are proliferated in northern Kenya, we will continue talking on the floor of this house when 16 to 17 year, 15 year old and 20 year old boys hold government hostage in rough terrains which they cannot access. It's only the military which can go there. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I support Madam Korele on this adjournment motion. Honorable members, I realize there's still a lot of interest. Unfortunately, our time is up. Honorable members, and the time now being two minutes past 7 p.m., this house stands adjourned until tomorrow, Wednesday, 17th April 2024, at 9.30 a.m.